Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me pretty well? Because I hear that some of you respond really, really well. If I, oh, God, I didn't even have to do it. I was just asking my friends down here, what, how do you get really quiet in your classroom? And I learned a really great clap, but I don't even have to use it. So thank you guys, awesome. We are so happy that you are here at the Library of Congress this morning and really excited to both welcome you and introduce you to a terrific new author that you might have heard of before. Um, my name is Leanne Potter and I direct a new office of learning and innovation here at the library. And I see we've got one group coming in still. I'm gonna let them sort of trickle in. Um, First thing I wanna do is I wanna recognize all the groups that are here in the audience with us today. Um, when I say the name of your school, I want you to get a big smile on your face, okay? And then when I've read all of the school names, that's when I want you all to clap, okay? So when I read your school name, you're gonna smile. And when I finish, you're gonna clap, okay? All right. So today, we are very happy to be welcoming students and teachers and chaperones from Ludlow Taylor Elementary School, from Truesdell Education Campus, from the Inspired Teaching Demonstration Public Charter School, from Dorothy Height Elementary, from Tyler Elementary, from Kimball Elementary, and from Brent Elementary School. Now we can cheer. That was perfect. We also Thank you. Hey, I see some of you doing this. And that seems to work. Awesome, thank you guys. I'm also excited to let you know that in addition to all of the students who are with us at the library today, we also have, we have people all over the world watching this program on YouTube and on the library's website and on the library's Facebook page because we're live streaming it. And that camera right there, if you guys wanna to wave to it, you can wave to people all over the whole wide world. <laughs> okay. I think they liked that, thank you. Now on with our show. So last December, here at the Library of Congress, we had a special program celebrating a book. The book we were celebrating was one published in 1936, and it was turned into a movie in 2017, and some of you may have heard of it because you either read the book, The Story of Ferdinand, or you saw the movie Ferdinand. Well, in the movie, In Ferdinand the movie, the voice of Ferdinand was John Cena, and he came here to the library and read the original book to a large group of students in this very auditorium. Today, we are very happy 
that he is back with us again. And once again, inspiration is part of our program. Last December, when we introduced John, we described him as an actor and as a wrestling superstar. And those descriptions certainly still apply, but today we get to add author to his description. He has written a new book entitled Elbow Grease. It was illustrated by Howard McWilliam and published by Random House. And a copy of this book is now in the Library of Congress's collection. So it is part of the largest library in the world. John is here not only to read Elbow Grease, but also to share another book, one written and illustrated by Richard Scarry that inspired him. After John reads from the two books, he will talk with us a bit and will answer questions that I know a few of you have. So please join me in welcoming 16-time world champion wrestler, star of blockbuster movies, record-setting Make-A-Wish grantor, reader, fan of Richard Scarry books, and published author, John Cena. everybody doing this morning? Is it okay if I sit? That's, that's, no, yes. Sit? I can't, yes or no? Yes or no? Okay, no, okay, right. that's, that's, that's good. That's good. I heard, I heard everybody singing before, uh, before I came out here. You guys have a wonderful voice. Collectively, it sounded wonderful. Congratulations on wonderful songs. Singing is fun, right? I couldn't quite understand. Singing is fun, right? Yeah. Yes. Singing is great, and like drawing is great, and maybe watching uh, shows are great, and telling stories is great because it's all creative. And all of us, no matter where we come from, no matter what we look like, all of us have inside us this wonderful thing called imagination. And when you get to sing, or you, you watch something that you, stimulates your imagination, it's fun. And to me, what also stimulates my imagination is books. Books more than anything else. Because in the pages, you can kind of determine what the characters are like, maybe develop a voice for somebody or a personality for a character. So books certainly are one of my favorite ways to be imaginative. And I, of course, have a list of favorite books. But I wanted to ask you guys some questions. What? makes a book a favorite? I know for me, but what about you guys? What are some of the things that in, you look for in a book that makes it a favorite? See, that's better. Now we can see each other. Before, they couldn't see, or I couldn't see them. We have a few answers out there. This is, this is something that's very interesting to me, because I know all of our answers are going to be different. Initial reports are coming in. The question, things that make a book a favorite, mystery. Mystery, a good old fashioned guessing game of what's really going on, mystery is good. Imagination, imagination, that's also one of my faves as well. Inspiration, inspiration, a very good and powerful word and hopefully we have some inspiration here today. What else we got? Imaginative, very good. There seems to be a good amount of imagination in the room. Looks like it's going to be a wonderful morning. Pictures. Pictures are also a key part of the book because it can help you imagine the world that the storyteller is trying to create. These are all great answers, by the way. Thank you so much. And so many people want to contribute. This is great. It takes you somewhere. That's the wonderful thing about books, 
it takes us to some place special. They're very powerful. Yes, they are very powerful. The stories that they tell are very powerful. Cool words like elbow grease. <laughs> and having a lot of books. That's extremely important because the more books you have, the more stories you can be involved in. Fiction. Fiction is another great answer. We have one in the front. We have one coming up on the side. Colorful, that goes along with amazing pictures, being colorful and vibrant. And traveling. Traveling is something that can take us stories to wherever we want to be, around the world or beyond. So those are all, wait, wait, fiction and non-fiction. The opposite of fiction. We'll just, we'll include everything, which is great, because we're, we're here at the Library of Commerce. We, we should give everything their due. So, those are all great answers. And I want to thank you for you sharing with me what makes your book's favorite. I wanted to share with you a book that was my absolute favorite when I was a little kid. I grew up in a small town. It was nothing like DC. You couldn't see fancy buildings and people walking the streets and tons of cars and trucks and things that go. You had farmland, and I was lucky to maybe get a glimpse at a rusted old tractor, and my next door neighbor was miles and miles away. So when my mom read me this story, cars and trucks and things that go, I didn't really hang on every word, because there's a lot of words in here for a children's book. It's a long book. But what I loved, as some of you guys pointed out, I loved the pictures because it brought me away to a world that I could see these amazing machines that I'd only heard about. Like if you open the book, I'll just even flip to page nine. There's a pickle truck, a giant pickle truck. There's also a dragster and a crocodile car and a sailboat, and then there's a tow truck and what looks like a sports car, and what looks like an antique sports car, and a milk truck, and this is only one page. I saw this as a kid and was like, man, the pickle truck is bigger than everything else. It's huge. If you turn to page, ooh, this is a good one. So page 15, I always love construction. I love bulldozers because they could smash and I loved cranes because they could lift things. And I loved big trucks because they could carry things and tow things. So on one page, you have a crane, a bulldozer, a real small minivan, which is a, which is a mouse van. You have a jack-o'-lantern pumpkin car, and then you have a rainbow bus, and all a bunch of really cool stuff. And, oh, I think this was my favorite page of the whole book because I loved making a mess as a little kid, and I loved big trucks. And you could see all sorts of dump trucks, what they carry, and they're all making a mess. You have trucks that carry coal, trucks that carry rocks, trucks that carry dirt, trucks that carry tomatoes, trucks that carry oranges, trucks that carry sand, and they're all making a mess. And as a kid, I loved this. And it's just an example of your answers to these questions about what makes a book your favorite. If you turn to page, even page 35, you again see dump trucks, but instead of making a mess this time, they're building a road. So they're doing something productive, and they're making a road to help make a city. And then I got to thinking as a kid, well, who's going to live in that city, and what's the city going to look like? Man, it must be a crazy faraway place. And on page 45, I don't know if you not know this about me, but I like to drive pretty fast. It's like the speed limit, almost. <laughs> but I've always liked fast cars. And this is a whole page devoted to cars that go fast. And as a kid, I just couldn't believe that all of this material was in one book. And guys, this is only five pages of this massive, massive book. And once again, I loved when my mom used to read me this story, but she used to read it and the words almost felt like music because I was so lost in the pictures. 
And that's the great thing about books, especially from some of the answers we heard. If they're colorful, if they're vibrant, if they have a great story, if they have a little bit of mystery, if they have wonderful pictures, it can allow us to use that powerful thing called imagination that allows us to create fantastic and wonderful things. So, I want to ask you a few questions before we get into this little guy who I admire. Uh, how many of you, like me, like cars? Okay, there's a few. How many like trucks? How many like cars and trucks? Okay. How many of you have brothers? How many of you? Okay, all right, all right. Energetic subject, maybe you got a big brother, a little brother. How many of you have sisters? Oh, okay, okay. How many of you have brothers and sisters? Raise your hand if you have a brother, a sister, or a cousin. Okay. This one we did pretty good with. Now, now that's a very, that's a very important question because it has to do with the story I'm about to read you. I wanted to ask if you had a brother, a sister, or a cousin, because you know what it's like to be close to someone who is family. Sometimes you guys get along. Sometimes maybe you have a disagreement. Sometimes you don't get along. But at the end of the day, because you're family and you spend a lot of time with each other, you develop love and bond for one another. And that's kind of what led me to want to write Elbow Grease. Because as you'll soon find out, Elbow Grease lives in a wonderful world of imagination. But he's just a little bit different than his brothers. And sometimes his brothers don't understand and make fun of him for it. But Elbow Grease doesn't care because he's proud of who he is. So it was because of my family that I really wanted to write this story that I'm gonna share with you today. Would it be okay right now if I were to share that story with you? I'm a, I must apologize, I'm not as young as I used to be and they say that hearing is the first thing to go. I just couldn't hear your answer. Would it be okay if I shared this story with you right now? I, I, was, that a, was that a yes or no? I gotta ask one more time. Would it be okay if I shared this? With Well, without further ado, the moment we've all been waiting for, the wonderful story of Elbow Grease. Here is our cast of characters. There is Elbow Grease. Hee <laughs> hee, that tickles. Flash. Come on, Bo, the story's starting. Pinball, technically, at this point. The story has already started. And Tank, what story? And of course, Crash. Last one there's a hunk of junk! <laughs> Elbow Grease, hey hey, that's me. All righty. <clears throat> Elbow Grease was the smallest truck in the demolition derby but he never let that bother him. Why should I? His brother Tank was tougher. His brother Flash was faster. His brother Pinball was smarter. And his brother Crash was braver. Okay, we get the point. But what Elbow Grease had was gumption. You got that right, Buster. He always tried his best, and he never gave up. Ouch! Ah! Oops. Yow! 
At night, Mel the mechanic plugged in elbow grease to charge while the other truck slept outside. Sometimes his brothers teased him for being different. He's got a plug. He's stuck to the wall. He has a lithium ion battery which requires external power source for daily recharging. <laughs> He's got a plug. <laughs> elbow grease didn't get upset. He was glad to be inside, especially during the rainstorms. Yeah, have fun in the rain, you jalopies. Then one night, Mel brought home a poster of the Monster Truck Grand Prix and its reigning champion, Big Wheels McGee. Elbow Grease said, someday I'm gonna be on a poster. His brothers all laughed. You're too slow. You're too small. Your technique and experience are insufficient to compete at a professional level. You're, uh, don't hurt yourself, Tank. That made Elbow Grease mad. So mad that he zoomed off to the Grand Prix by himself to prove his brothers wrong. I'll show those jalopies what I can do. But in the morning, Elbow Grease was exhausted. You see, he'd been driving all night without a charge. But when he arrived at the Grand Prix, he felt his circuit surge with excitement, and he quietly rolled onto the track and snuck behind the monster trucks at the starting line. The race was about to begin. On your mark, get set, go! The other trucks were bigger. The other trucks were faster. The other trucks had more experience and better technique. But elbow grease wouldn't quit. Never give up. He fell behind, but he kept on trucking. Oof. He got covered in mud, but he kept on rolling. Yuck. He got bashed and smashed and even caught fire a little bit. But still, he kept on going. Owie kazowie. Halfway through the race, it started pouring rain. Thunder rumbled, lightning flashed, and all of a sudden Elbow Grease's engine shut down. His battery was completely dead. Aw, oh, rust buckets. Elbow Grease was stuck, and for the first time, he wondered if his brothers were right, and he started to cry. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not crying, I'm just cold, and I'm, I'm tired, and Kind of scared of the light. crack a lack boom shack a lack <laughs> The lightning jolted the battery back to life. Elbow grease barely had enough charge to keep going, but he didn't give up and he didn't give in. No matter what, he would finish this race, even if he came in last. Mel and Elbow Grease's brothers arrived just in time to see him rattle across the finish line and collapse in a heap. And the winner's celebration was already over. Aww. Look, Bo, most of the trucks couldn't even make it to the finish line. And just then, the winner of the race rolled by. Well, shift my gears and call me Sally. This kid's got gumption. You boys could learn a lot from him. Crash was shocked. Big? Flash was stunned. Wheels? Pinball was intrigued. McGee? Tank, Tank was confused. Who? Mel knew that Big Wheels McGee was right. If you only stick with stuff you're good at, You'll never learn anything. So, the next time your problem seems too big or too hard, just remember, a little elbow grease goes a long, long way. The
ends. First things first, I want to say thank you. Thank you very much for allowing me to share something that's part of my imagination with you. And secondly, I hope maybe we could all use our imagination today to maybe see the world of elbow grease and maybe get a wonderful message at the same time. But lastly and most important, I know you guys and gals have questions. And I would like to answer those questions now. So I, I made a little bit of extra time because I saw how many questions or answers we had at the beginning. And I want to make sure if you have a question, I'll do my best to answer. So this is the most important part. If you have questions, I have answers. Let's go. And we're going to start with those questions. And if we have additional time, we'll move on to some other questions. So my colleagues who have the microphones floating around, I think Sasha's got one back here. And I, th I think what we'll have is two microphones on each side of the room. And if you have a question that is on one of the flashcards, if you could hold it up so that my friends in the audience can see you, they're gonna walk up to you and they're gonna ask you to say your name and then ask your question, okay? All right, Sasha, we'll start with who you've got there. Okay, what's our first question? My name is Demetrius. And the question is, what's your second favorite book? What's, what's, say again? What's your second favorite book? Second favorite book, besides Elbow Grease, besides Cars and Trucks and Things That Go, I'm a huge fan of Dr. Seuss, so I would say Green Eggs and Ham. Uh, maybe also One Fish, Two Fish, I'm not sure. Those are, those are good titles, those are good titles. Thank you. You're very welcome. Great question. Okay. Mia, do you have someone? I don't think she knows Mia. Okay. Christine. Hi, my name is Austin. And I would like to ask you do you still like cars and trucks and why? Do I still like cars and trucks? You know, I'm a little bit older now, so yes, I absolutely do. I do. Uh, because, because cars and the way they're designed is someone's imagination come to life. If it's a sports car or if it's a truck, just the way it looks and the way it drives is someone's idea, and I like that. I think we have another question over here, Taylor. Sasha. My we name have a is lot Taylor, of excitement. and my question is, are you going to write another book? Hmm, am I going to write another book? Honestly, that depends on you folks. Would you like me to write another book? Yeah! So, Thank so you. you actually like the story that you heard? And if given the chance, you would want me to write another book. Thank you very much for saying that. I think this will not be the last of the books. Thank you. My name is your friend, and do you like wrestling? Do you like wrestling? Yeah. There. There was a question from the front, from the front right hand corner. You're right. The question was. Do you like wrestling? Do I like wrestling? <laughs> I am proud enough to say that I have won the world championship 16 times.
see some people are excited about that. Yes, I absolutely love WWE. That is a great question. Thank you for asking. Um, Mia or Kelly? Mia, do you have a question back there? Mia? My, my name is Amicia. We have an important question coming in. Let's listen up to the question, please. My name is Amicia. And my question is, how many books did you read in second grade? You know, how many books did I read in second grade? I was fortunate enough to have a second grade teacher whose favorite thing was book reports. And in second grade, I didn't think it was such a good idea. I used to say, ah, oh, these crummy book reports. I gotta write down all, all my stories about these books that I read. But now, looking back, I read a lot of books. So I would say in second grade, at the very least, just gonna, I'm just gonna ballpark it, at the very least 10 books, and at the very most, probably 15 books. But without that teacher, I probably only would have read one or two. So I'm very happy for my teacher. Christine. Yes, we have a question right here. My name's Avery, and my question is, how did you pick the title for Elbow Grease? Okay, okay, okay. Do you folks know what Elbow Grease means? No. Okay, this is the first, this is the first time, usually it's like an overwhelming, yes! But this is okay, this is okay. So, there's a lot of you out there that don't know what the word elbow grease means, which is exactly why I chose it. Because I want you to be so entertained by the story, you ask someone, what does elbow grease mean? Now, you just happen to ask the right person because I wrote the book. <laughs> elbow grease means hard work. And that's why elbow grease's special talent is gumption, and he never gives up. So today, not only did you hear a good story, but you also learned something. You know that elbow grease means hard work. Christine's got one right here. We got a question right here. My name is Carson. What's our food? How strong are you? How strong are you? Ooh. Uh, I am strong enough to keep myself out of trouble. <laughs> yes, that's, or, or get myself into trouble, I think, I don't know, one or the other. That is a good question. We have one way up in the back, way up in the back. What is your favorite thing that says room? What is my? Favorite thing that says room, like a car. Oh, mm, what is my favorite thing that says broom? anything that, that sounds like it goes fast. Because you've heard some cars, and I, I'm a huge fan of the electric cars, but I wish they would come with like speakers in them so when you put your foot in the gas, go I like that noise, that, uh, just because I grew up with it. I grew up with it, but I'm learning to like no noise. Mia, Do we have more? Of course we have more. Okay. Where's our next question coming from? My name's Jabaro and... Oh. We have one? My name's Jabaro and my question is, what book are you reading now? My, my question is, what book are you reading now? Okay, that's a great question. So, besides reading Elbow Grease, I'm reading a wonderful story called The Storied Life of A.J. Fickrey. It's about a bookstore owner and his journey of life through books. And it's really, really good. But maybe for a few years down the road. Yes, right here. My name is Charlie, and how long did it take you to write Elbow Grease? Oh, so, just I'll, I'll answer the question with a question. How long do you guys think it took to write Elbow Grease? 30 minutes. Five minutes, 10 minutes, six minutes, 
Two minutes, two minutes. I see a lot of twos. Would you like to know? Would you like to know how long it took? Okay, okay, okay. It took me three years, three whole years to write elbow grease. Now it seems pretty simple, but it's not simple. It's really hard. And that's why I really wanted to tell the story because even though elbow grease never gives up, there was time in those three years I could have been like, man, this is too tough or it's never gonna work. But I never gave up and I have a wonderful story to show for it and I'm able to sit here and share it with you. So it took a long time and it was tough, it wasn't easy. So just remember that, sometimes the things you enjoy, they're not easy, they're tough and they take a while, but keep at it and never give up. Do we have another question? Yes. My, na my name is Julian and my question is, what is your favorite color and your favorite ice cream flavor? Ooh. I'll only allow those two questions in one question because they're very good questions. Uh, favorite color right now is blue because that's the color of elbow grease. <laughs> favorite ice cream flavor is chocolate chip cookie dough with M&M. Yes. And I also like hot fudge and sprinkles. I'm sure we have more. I'm sure we have more questions. Ah, we have one right here. We have one right here. My name is Livy, and what do you eat for breakfast? What do I eat for breakfast? I wish, I wish it was chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream. It's not. I usually have a bowl of cereal and some eggs and a big glass of water. And that's it. Do we have more? Do we have more questions? Do we have more time? I think, I think we have about five more minutes. We yeah, can let's get more. There's questions out there. All right. What's your name? My name is Dominic. Okay, we have a question. We have a question. Are you still with Brie Bella? Now, now Jonathan, I, I thank you very much for your question, but I think you're a little bit confused. You see, Brie Bella is married to Daniel Bryan. So if I answered your question yes, that would get me in a whole lot of trouble. So the answer is no. <laughs> Do we have another question? <laughs> yes, we have a question, we have a question, we have a question. My name is Dominic, and do you still wrestle? Do I still? Have I? How could you? How could you ask such a question? I was just in Australia on October 6th in a WWE ring, and the next time, in case you're wondering, I'll be in a WWE ring is November 2nd in a giant tournament to see who's the best in the world. So yes, yes, I'm still in WWE. Next question. We have one. We have one. We have a question. We have a question. Have you beat The Rock before? Have I beat The Rock before? Is there anyone who knows the answer to that question? Have I beat The Rock before? One more time. Have I beat The Rock before? <clears throat> I have, but he's also beat me. So I've won, and I've lost. I think we have time for two more questions. We have a wonderful crowd. There's a lot of, lot of questions out there, a lot of excitement. Do we have a question? OK, I think we have one over here. We have one right here. We have one right here. My name is Micah. and. My question is, why did you become an author? Ooh, that's a great question. A great question. Because I wanted to encourage young people to read. 
And that's why I didn't write an adult book. I wanted to become a children's author because I know a lot of children watch WWE and a lot of children like to see me perform. So I wanted to give a chance for young people to become readers. And one more and that'll do it. One more question, the final question. Could be about ice cream. Hi, my name is King, and what is your favorite t-shirt? What is my favorite t-shirt? I mean, your favorite shirt. What's my favorite shirt? Well, I, I, can't, I can't tell you that it's what I have on, because it's, I just dressed my best for you guys, and I want it to look nice. Uh, oh, wait a second. There's a picture of it right here. <laughs> I You're made so sure funny. that was my one demand when we did this whole <laughs> giant photo shoot. I said, you better have my favorite t-shirt there. And lo and behold, my favorite t-shirt was there. Standard white, comfortable. <laughs> Thank you. You're very welcome. And wait a second, wait a second. Before we wrap up the morning, I wanted to say thank you, thank all of you. Because I know sometimes it's difficult to sit in a place and listen to people talk. You guys have been a wonderful audience. I want to thank you. I want to thank your parents. I want to thank your teachers. I hope we had some fun today. Did you guys have some fun? This is probably the last time today you'll be able to scream really loud, so give me all you got. Did you have some fun today? We're going to write it out. So, the most important thing I wanted to say to you guys is, I just wanted to make sure that, oh, that was very impressive. I want to thank everybody for being here today. I want to thank you for giving me so much energy to get through the rest of my day. I hope you guys had a wonderful day, and I hope you enjoyed the story. Thank you very much. And John, the library, oh. thanks you too. Thank yes. you. A uh, picture with flashcard.